That's Shayna Cleveland with a song from her new solo album, Manzanita. We spoke to Shayna a couple of years ago about her band La Luz. This time around we find Shayna out in the country in Grass Valley, California where she and her partner Will live with their son. Shayna talks about making Manzanita during and after her pregnancy, but before we get into all that, we want to know what is Manzanita? It's a small tree. I don't know enough about trees to say what type it is, but it's yeah, it's a small tree that has flowers at some time, sometimes of the year. Yeah, I guess it is evergreen. It does always have leaves, so I guess that probably makes it evergreen if it doesn't drop its leaves. <laughs> Just <laughs> thinking back to grade school uh, uh -huh. science. Right. Right, right. So, and why is it that uh, the title of your new album? Well, it's a tree that grows a lot out here where I live in Grass Valley. And um, it's not one I was familiar with before living here. Um, so I think I, I associate it with this place. And these songs are really uh, inspired by this the this place that I've lived for the last five years. Right, right, right. So you've had uh, an eventful last year or so, haven't you? So uh, yeah. I don't know how much of that you want to touch on, but maybe just fill folks in with what kind of what you've been up to and what you've kind of gone through. Yeah, it's. I mean, I feel like just even the last... Gosh, I, since 2019, it's just been kind of crazy. It's nonstop crazy for me. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> feel like a totally different human um, than I right. did three years ago. But I, I think that's probably, you know, everybody feels a little bit of that. But I had, I yep. was diagnosed with cancer about a year ago. Um, I, I'm good. I feel like I'm pretty good now. Um, and okay. yeah. uh, I have, I also had a, a son three years ago and then the pandemic and it's, it was just sort of a lot of events back to back for me that were just sort of, I've just been sort of constantly reevaluating life and my place in right. the world I feel like for the last three years. <laughs> come but I've, I've come, come up, up to up any major uh, 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 realizations after that? Yeah, you know, I think I have. I'm not sure I quite know how to articulate them yet, but I feel right. like I just feel uh, I think I feel happier. I feel more at ease and I feel more in tune with some sort of overarching mysticism. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Now, I think I read some of the uh, PR that came with the, the album that says that side A of your songs were written while you were pregnant and side B was the songs were written after the birth of your son. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. At first I thought that they would all be written while I was pregnant. I, I thought it would be interesting to just see what that sounded like, you know, a whole album written during that time. Because for me, that was such a psychedelic time. I feel right. like it just every day it was something new that I felt I felt totally out of control. You know, I just uh, for, you know, in a way that I had never experienced before. And so I thought, well, this is such a weird experience. And I was alone a lot of the time too, out here in the country. Um, my partner oh. was on tour often. Um, and so I, yeah, I just, I was in this pretty psychedelic place personally. And I thought, let me just try and write an entire album during this time, you know, and as it happened, half of the songs were written right after he was born, which turned out to be uh, just as, just as strange. So I just kind of, yeah, went with that. I, I just thought, thought, well, I'll just make the conscious choice to sort of order it that way because it seemed interesting to me. Uh, right, right. And as a listener, do you think we'll hear some kind of difference between side A and side B? Uh, you know, I, I, I think that uh, side A might be a little a little darker, if anything. Um, I think that, right. that, yeah, I think side B might be a, a little gentler, although it does have sort of the most angry song of the album <laughs> but yeah oh. I, I, I think i think those t those two times were were fair, were sort of similar you know but i do think that maybe side a if anything is is a little stranger and more mysterious the the songs that i wrote while i was right. pregnant well the first song is called a ghost and I, i've written in my little notes here uh, the word haunted so there you yeah. go <laughs> 
Why, did, why does that lead off the, uh, the album for you? I am a ghost and I'm trying to show Yeah, that was one that I wrote um, when I was pregnant, and I and it was it, just just that feeling of of being possessed by something that I couldn't see. You know, it it just felt so being haunted felt so literal in a way um, when I was pregnant, and so uh, I just wanted to explore that in a song. And then when I sort of looked back at all the songs, that one seemed to articulate the. The, sort of the strangeness and the surrealness of of that time for me and in, in in a way that right. yeah it just felt like a great opener just just jumping right into the to the to the haunted <laughs> vibe that permeates <laughs> now i see you posted uh, a video for faces in the firelight a few about two weeks ago so what what was it about that song that kind of wanted you to bring that one up first and make a video with Yeah, that song, it is another one, yeah, from, from side A, the pregnant side. And that song I wrote when um, I was watching my partner, Will, tend to this burn pile. Out here in California, we have to have uh, designated days where you can sort of burn all of all of the trees and branches right. that have fallen around your property as a fire uh fire prevention you, you have the fire to avoid the big fire and so um he was right. having one of these giant burn piles and and i was just looking out and he was he just seemed so so tiny and uh something about how vulnerable and small he looked in front of this giant fire that was just burning into the night i i he looked like the ultrasound image that we had on our fridge and it just made me, <laughs> I, I think that I, I, yeah, I saw the connection there and, and um, it's just a very, it's, it's, it's such a love song, you know, and it's a love song to, to both of them at once, you know, the unborn child and the person that I was about to become a parent with. And um, yeah, so in that way, it just, it also seemed like a, a nice one to lead with. And for the video for that, we, we tried to shoot it. We shot it outside my house and uh, used a lot of natural elements that were created, um, right? Like like sculptures of flowers right next to actual flowers, and so it was. It felt like a good way to sort of represent the the inspiration of nature, but also the the way that it gets manipulated and and uh, and exaggerated and um, through you know the lens of writing songs. Right. That was quite a large cake that you're picnicking with in the, in the video. Is yeah. that, was that an actual cake? No, <laughs> no it looks so good, but uh, you definitely don't <laughs> want to eat the cake. And I, I love the way you have it drawing giant flies. <laughs> yeah, I love, I love those flies. It's my favorite scene. <laughs> 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 Very good. Uh, so skipping over to side two, um, I noticed that maybe it's a, a style of production that you, you guys kind of go for with a lot of the tracks, especially near the end, have maybe 50 seconds of intro and kind of mood setting before your vocal comes in. Is that something that you consciously think about when you're making the record? Are you, um, yeah. Are you thinking of like the, uh, the sort of interlude tracks or like the yeah, just well, the long... No, no. The, the, like there's a gold tower. I think your vocal yeah. comes in at like 54 seconds and, uh, yeah. And there's another one that uh, is even longer, I think. So, yeah, I think, yeah, I think, um, you know, these, these are not pop songs, uh, <laughs> yeah. for the most part. <laughs> okay. I think it would be so fun to write a pop song, but I just don't seem to do that. I, I think that I just, uh, especially when I get into a lot of these finger picking 
songs. I just, I, for me, it's that playing guitar in that style is so meditative. So I tend to just kind of zone out a little bit, you know, I just kind of like what's happening so much that I don't worry about bringing in the vocals too soon. Right, right, right. So you did touch on the fact that there are a few very short instrumental pieces throughout the record. So maybe you can elaborate why they're there. Yeah, I, you know, I added those afterwards. I, I thought I had finished the record and um, I just was kind of going back and listening to it and thinking about it. And then, um, and then I thought, you know, I actually, I want to add, I want to add stuff to this record. I don't quite know what, but I just felt like I wanted it to connect a little bit more as a whole. And so um, I wrote to my label and I said, you know, I, I don't think it's done yet. I'm going to, I'm going to do some more stuff. <laughs> I didn't know what it was yet, but uh, I just kind of sat around with Will, my partner who plays all the synths and keyed instruments on the record and just thought about like, how can we connect these songs and, and sort of, because I had ordered it, um, in this really intentional way, uh, according to, you know, the times that the songs were written, I thought I might as well lean into that and, and just sort of connect the songs through, um, through these, uh, I don't know what to call them really, but just through these short tracks, short, mostly wordless tracks. Um, mm -hmm. and just to sort of make it feel more like a continuous piece. Cause that's sort of how it feels to me when I listen to it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Ah. So the record is out to, is, I think the release date is in March, March 10th, I believe. So yeah. what have you got planned once that happens on the day and thereafter? <laughs> but, yeah, I'm going to do a record release show. Um, I'm going to do some touring in the U S and hopefully in the UK. And, right. um, you know, really I'm, I'd like to take these songs as many places as I can. So I'm just going to see what, you know, what right. off present themselves and see how many places I can, I can get out to. So when you tour on your, as a solo artist, what kind of configuration and presentation do you do? I'm sort of figuring that out right now. I, I have a band that I, uh, like a full piece band that's sort of ideal, I think, but, um, I think that I'll also probably play it's nice because I, it, I do feel like the songs are pretty flexible. I think that I could play them by myself and right. um, I could play them as a duo with Will with just the synths and guitar. Um, and we did that for my last record and it was really nice touring that way. Um, and then, yeah, I do want to try though, because there are more drums on this record than my other solo records to do, uh, to do some full band shows, as many as I can afford to do <laughs> really <laughs> with a full band. Right. It must be. It must take quite a bit of uh, organization because you got your solo thing. You're in a band. Will's in a band. And yeah, you got a family thing going on. So how do you how do you deal with all that? <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like every day I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> like we just talk. We just talk all the time. We have a calendar. You know, I make calendars every year, so those just get filled up with everything and. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, it is. It is tricky, but for some reason, it it's. It always seems to work out. I, I think we're uh, Will and I are just. You know, we're kind of. We've both been touring for so long that we're kind of used to used to that flexibility. But yeah, it's it's definitely tricky. Okay, and do you have another video uh, on the way before the album is released? Yeah, I have a video for a ghost that I'm really excited oh, about. It's definitely creepy, and uh, <laughs> it, but it's inspired by uh, like America's Funniest Home Videos kind of vibe. <laughs> so <Right>. yeah, <laughs> it's really weird. I'm excited for people to see it. Anyway, okay. Oh, so and I assume L uh, your band Laluz is still a going concern. What's happening there? Yeah, yeah, it's still we have a new record that we're just kind of finishing up. So that'll be out sometime. I don't know, maybe ne maybe this year, maybe next year. Yeah. All right. Very good. Well, hopefully you can come down to New Zealand either as a solo person or as a band mate and uh, entertain us sometime in the near future now that things are opening up again. That would be cool. Yeah, I hope so too. I man, I really loved going to New Zealand, so I yeah, I really want to go back. Hope it happens soon. 
<laughs> Excellent. Well, enjoy your. It sounds like you're having a a good time out in the in the is it the California wilderness? I guess you would call it. Is where yeah. you live, right? Do you want to see where I'm at? It's pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's no people. Right. Ooh. Just trees. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. That sounds idyllic. <laughs> All righty. I'll let you get out there and enjoy your scenery. Uh, thank you for talking to me. I appreciate it. And good luck with the record. Thank you. Nice to talk to and you. And everything again. else. All righty. Bye. Bye-bye.